focus on one task, getting the mind to stay with the breath. We live in a society that values multitasking. But often when you do many tasks all at once, none of them gets very well done. And when we do that, we miss out on, on many things. People who multitask and say that they get the task done just as well as if they were working on one task at a time. Well, like people with brain damage who say that their brain is fine. Because as far as they can tell, it's okay, but their powers of judgment are limited. So they can't be relied on to really judge how well the task is done. The same principle applies with being with the breath. If you're trying to do too many things at once, you can't really judge how well you're doing. If you're with the breath and with something else and with something else and with something else, you don't really know how well any of those are being done. Yet there's a lot to be learned by focusing on one thing at a time. You see things more clearly, your powers of judgment are better, and the joy that comes from doing it is also increased. There's some ways of finding joy in life that come from gaining certain things. The joys of gaining nice sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. That's one kind of joy. But then there's the joy of doing things well. That comes only when you focus on doing one task at a time. In our life here at the monastery, we try to minimize the number of tasks that people have. But there are a number of things we have to do. After all, we're human beings with bodies, with needs, that have to be looked after. But those tasks can also be done in a single-minded way, with a sense of wanting to do them well. When you're doing many tasks at a time, it's basically trying to dispose of them, get them out of the way. But here we're learning to do tasks and learning how to savor them. This is what it's like to sweep well. This is what it's like to clean things up well. This is what it's like to cook well. This is what it's like to do whatever, do whatever well. And there's a joy that comes from that. And in the practice, this is the kind of joy that we focus on, the joy that comes from doing. You look at the various passages where the Buddha talks about the ways of generating joy. And not only doing things, but also doing them with a sense of being conscious of what you're doing, being alert to what you're doing. The joy that comes from generosity. When you focus on your, your motivation, realize that your motivation is a good thing. And it's good to have that good motivation in mind and to act on it. Learn to savor that. The same with the joy that comes from observing the precepts, being virtuous. You look back on your behavior and you realize there's no reason for remorse. And that lack of remorse becomes your source of joy. The joy that comes from Abandoning the hindrances. You see that the mind had sensual desire, and you're able to get past it. It had a will, and you're able to get past that. And so on down the line. Sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, uncertainty. When you recognize these things as they come in the mind, you recognize that they are a hindrance and you want to get rid of them. That's half the battle right there. And then learning the various techniques for thinking your way around them. Get a greater sense of mastery over your own mind. And there's a joy that comes from that as well. So whatever the task you're engaged in, and very simple things like cleaning the place up, 
to the practice of meditation. Focus on what you're doing. Focus on doing it well. Because these activities have a purpose, and one of the purposes is to cultivate that sense of joy which is conducive to getting the mind to settle down. We had a visitor here recently who had been to some other monasteries, and he noted that the other places they have signs all over the place saying, do this, do that, wash your cup, put it back in its place, put the broom here. They had a work monk who goes around with a clipboard telling everybody what to do. Whereas here things are more voluntary. There's a corner that hasn't been swept. You might see that it needs to be swept, and you realize, okay, here's a chance to make some merit. Here's a chance to do something well, do something good. Or if you see that someone else has swept it already, you realize they didn't do it because they had to do it, they did it because they wanted to. And it creates a better sense of joy in the community. But the joy is there primarily when you're well focused. See, these jobs not to get out of the way, jobs not to dispose of. The jobs, <coughs> jobs to be done, opportunities to do good, do well. And do, notice a combination that you do good and you do well. You do something that's good for everybody and you do it well. And there's a joy that comes with that. There's a greater alertness. And as you focus on doing something well, it develops your powers of judgment. That idea that people who practice the Dharma should not be passing judgment has almost no basis at all in the canon. There's one passage where the Buddha does said, don't try to measure the attainments of other people. If you do, you harm yourself. But aside from that, he says, you have to judge. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to emulate? There's a whole section of one of the suttas where the Buddha talks about having a sense of people, having a sense of individuals, and it's basically knowing to judge what kind of person is better than another kind of person. The person who wants to listen to the Dharma is better than one who doesn't want to listen. One who listens carefully is better than one who doesn't listen carefully. One who tries to remember the Dharma, one who tries to explore the Dharma, one who actually has to practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma. These all people are better than those who don't. Even when you're practicing the Dharma in line with the Dharma, those who practice for their own benefit and for, those, for the benefit of others is better than someone who practices only for his or her own benefit. So there are gradations. There are areas where we should pass judgment, primarily so that we can figure out what kind of people we want to be. And one good way of learning how to pass judgment is to look at your own behavior and see what you can do to improve it. And that requires that you focus on doing as few things at a time as possible. So you can see clearly what you're actually doing. And you can judge why you're doing it well. So there's a joy in monotasking. There's a lot to be learned, and that too is a source of joy, that you're gaining things. You're not just here to make sure that the monastery is neat, but you're gaining good qualities of mind as you do it. And these qualities of mind then transfer over into the meditation. Because when you sit down with your eyes closed and you focus on the breath, there are no signs there telling you what to do. It's up to you to have a sense of what works and what doesn't work. Remember John Lee's analogy, we're working on a skill here, like learning how to weave a basket, make clay tiles. You learn from the object that you're dealing with, and you learn best when you're focused on what you're doing. Otherwise you have no way of making any connection. If you were sewing a shirt but not paying careful attention to the thread going through the machine or the way the needle was going into the cloth, then when the shirt comes out and it doesn't look good, you don't know exactly where to make a change, because you don't remember what you did. 
But if you pay careful attention to what you're doing, you know this led to that, and that led to this, and the results were not good, so I'm going to go back and change this and that. So monotasking has lots of rewards. It has its purpose. It helps the mind calm down. Helps you see things more clearly. All the qualities of concentration and discernment get developed in focusing full attention on what you're doing, focus on doing it well, and learning how to appreciate the goodness that comes from that activity, the joy that comes from mastering a skill. Is that joy then becomes your food on the on the path. So that everything you're doing becomes part of the practice. And you can find joy in all those things as well. 